Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our auto centers franchise mode So I'm just gonna let you guys know first and foremost that this is a pre-recorded episode It's just because for some reason I always get an itch to sim the season because I want to see how good my top guys like Pukanov do and whatnot so um, yeah, well, anyways, this is a pre-recorded episode. I'm actually recording this like on the Thursday before you guys see this so anyways in last episode we had the off season and uh, we'd let go a couple guys on the bottom six, but it wasn't at bad of an off season for like letting go people. And uh, yeah, here's basically what our lineup looks like going into the season. So as you can see, we still got that Baumgartner, Loktyanov, and Pukanov line uh, that's been going on for like the last maybe six seasons, maybe even five seasons. I don't even know. Uh, second line, we got Voinov, Prohorkin, and Pushkarev. This line could change potentially because Voinov, I think, might grow to being a first liner. I don't know if Baumgartner is actually still a first line forward or not because he was dropping randomly last season. Um, Prohorkin could be higher than an 83. Pushkarev should be way higher than an 84 because of the fact he had such a good season last year, 68 points. I'm expecting him to grow maybe to like an 87. Hopefully, he's still not a first liner though. Then on our third line, we got Hornquist, Marco, who we signed in free agency, and Joshua Connolly. And then our fourth line is Lou Joseph, Reed Westcott, who makes his NHL debut, and Junior Fugafuji, who also makes his NHL debut. On the defensive side of things, we're kind of strong in a sense, and like three of our defensemen are, but the other three aren't so much. So we got Kapitanov with Jet Wu, and then Brian McCutcheon, who could be playing on the top six technically, and Dmitry Vishnevsky. Then also, hopefully, LaRose gets some growth, because he has been playing the last, like, three seasons, I think, two seasons, and he should be getting some growth, hopefully, to, like, an 81 or something to help round out our defensive core. And then Anisimov, who we signed in free agency, he should be a lot better than the 76, I think, because, as you can see, we signed him to one mil or a one-year $3 million contract, so I'm hoping he's at least an 80-something. So hopefully our defensive core looks better once we see what it actually looks like. And in our goaltending, we got Kulshov, who should be growing as well, considering he had a pretty solid season as a starter last year. Um, I'm hoping he's up to like a 90 maybe or an 89. And then hopefully Nordstrom's like an 83 for backup. Then in terms of depth, we have Shvidki, Mezzi, who we both drafted. They were in the AHL last year, but I'm going to use them as NHL depth. And we also got Liam Ekholm, who I don't really want to use as depth, but he was just, he's never growing it seems like. And he is a solid like performer when he does play like for goal wise. So hopefully he, uh, if he is put into the lineup, hopefully he could produce. So yeah, that is our lines going into the season. Actually, I want to just check the power play lines, make sure that's all correct before we actually start simulating. Because I want to make sure the power play unit simulates really good because it normally does. So hmm, what do we want to do here? I'm going to put Voinov. Let's see, let's put Voinov to the top one, put LaRose down here instead of uh, McCutcheon. And then we're going to take McCutcheon off the power play. And we are going to put in here, who are we going to put in? Oh yeah, it was Push Care of, I think. Yeah, we'll put Push Care of right here. Actually, no, it wasn't Push Care of, but... Yeah, we'll put Push Care of there, and we'll put Baumgartner there. Um, hmm. Okay, I might have just screwed up those lines, but let's take Baumgartner off the power play for a second. And let's put in on the second line power play, let's put in our youngster. Or actually, we could put in Pro Horkin. Or is he on there already? Yeah, he already is. Um, we could put in Westcott. Because I want to see how Westcott is as a player. And then we're going to take Push Care of off this spot of the power play and put in uh, Baumgartner just because I want to keep those guys together. So then we got those guys still together. And let's change sides with that. And then we got Voinov playing the point, because Voinov has a really great shot. Um, so hopefully he could play good there. And yeah, I think that should be good for that. Pelling kill wise looks fine, I think. Yeah, I think that's fine. So we'll leave it like that. So yeah, I'm hoping our team is pretty good in terms of offense. Hopefully we can play a lot better defensively this year because with the addition of Kapitanov, I think we should be able to because like Kapitanov's never been a minus player in his career and he's like had really good defensive seasons where he's been like a plus, I think, 20 something. So hopefully that helps us out a bit. 
Okay, so preseason, we are 1-1-1 one, one, and one so far. Not that this really matters, it's just more about the growth for the youngsters to see where they are overall wise. 3-1-1, one, and one, last two games. There's another win. And game against Detroit to end off the preseason. Do we beat them as well? Yes, we do. So we finished the preseason 5-1-1. One, and one. We won't know any of the overalls yet, I don't think, so we're going to have to simulate 10 games of the season to find out. Uh, but pretty good preseason. Voinov led the team in points with 8 points in those 7 games. Okay, so let's start up the season simulation. I don't know if we're going to do all the season in this episode. Like, I might go up to the deadline, depending on how we're playing. So, yeah, let's do first the first uh, 10 games of the season. So, up to here, I think. And then we will check our lines and make sure everything is looking good for the season. And then we'll continue. Um, no, I don't need to go assign the scouts. I think we have all our scouts, so it should be fine. So, first game of the season against the Rangers, we smoked them 6-2. to two. Nice. Offense and defense playing good that game. Hopefully, we could continue that. And we lose to the Ducks 1-0, so our offense didn't show up, but our defense did. And then we beat the Oilers... Can we beat Detroit? No, we can't. But we're still playing pretty good defensively in these games, even the ones that we lost in. I'm surprised our offense didn't show up in those ones. Game against Toronto, and we beat them 6-3. to three. Good job. Like, we're limiting teams to, looks like, around 3 to 2 goals per game. Which is a bit high, but then again, sometimes the goals can go up for every team in the league uh, later in the GM mode, so... Yeah, we're kind of bouncing around with wins and losses at this stage. Because we've had a couple of six-goal games where we've won, and then we've had a couple losses where we've let in, like, four. And there's a win over Minnesota. So 6-3-1 and one in our first ten. Let's now take a look at our lines, make sure everybody is actually in their correct positions. And holy crap. Voinov's only in his third season, and he's got 17 points in ten games. He's going to want a huge contract upgrade. I think his contract ends this year, actually. We might have to give him a contract extension. Let's see. Yeah, Voinov, what do you want for your contract? <laughs> I'm going to already just take him on a small deal, see if he's willing to do that. Because three years at 4.75 for a guy that's 85 overall, that's a really good deal if he's going to sign that with us. And he's worth that money, definitely, because he's playing really good this season so far. Okay, so yeah, let's continue the simulation. Pretty happy with the cert. Hopefully you can continue the entire season and not like fall apart in the end or something. So let's just go all the way up to November the 1st. So the last two games of October, we got the Jets and the Rangers. And we lose to the Jets in a shootout. I'm okay with that. At least it's a point. And then we lose to the Rangers. And Voinov is accepted. So we got him for three more years. I could have gave him actually probably a longer contract, but I want to see how he grows over those years like I feel like he's gonna jump up to being a, like a medium elite potential player because like he's almost like Loktyanov in that sense because Loktyanov was a late first rounder I think uh, Voinov was an early second rounder and they both were low elites and then they've both grown really insanely there's a huge win over the Sharks 8-3 to three. can we beat the Flames we're also playing good yes we do in overtime so we're getting W's early, which is nice, but we also have a decent amount of losses. There's a three-game winning streak followed by another one, so we're on a four-game winning streak now. I'm liking this start. I think Kuleshov is ready to be in that elite starter, too, so... Oh, yeah, I was going to check the overalls for all the players. Make sure they're in the right spots. Yeah, let's check that. Because I don't want anybody having the wrong ice time, because if somebody gets mad about ice time, it could drag down our performance, and we don't want that happening. But we are 13-5-2, holy crap, in our first 20 games. And Voinov's got 32 points, oh my god. Yeah, this guy might be taking over Baumgartner's spot on the top line next season, because I think Baumgartner's contract ends this year as well. Um, so that's something I think we probably will be doing. Even though I really like Baumgartner as a player, he might not be with the team next season. So, yeah, Baumgartner, he's an 87. I feel like Voinov's going to grow to, like, probably a 90 by next season if he's playing like this 
Prohor- Oh, jeez. Pushkarev went to an 88. Is he okay with his ice time at least? There's no loss of morale for ice time, but he should be on the first line technically. Wow. Wasn't expecting that much growth. Uh, Marco is actually a 79 only. So we could actually use him as a fourth liner. So we'll do it like that instead. Put Joseph up. Just switch it like that. And Hornquist still is as a third liner. That's good. Defensively, we're actually not that bad. 80 and 80. Jet Wu is only an 81. I thought he was an 84. Damn. That's a big loss. I thought he was actually a lot better than that. And goalie-wise, Kapitanov still... Or not Kapitanov. Kuleshov, 87 still. And Nordstrom still 80. So we're stronger, but I don't know if we're a Stanley Cup contending team if we play like this throughout the season. I don't think we're going to win the Cup and the Presidents. But then again, that's still a long time away. We still have 62 more games to go. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to go the entire season in this episode. I'd like to, but I don't know if we're going to be a good team by the deadline or not. And if we're going to have to make any moves for next episode or what. Also, sorry if you hear my water, it's just because I have to get a drink now and again. So, four to once our prospects, but I don't really want Demon Severson, especially at two years left. And $5 million, that's a kind of a big cap hit for us because we have quite a big, well, quite a lot of uh, guys that are making like $8 million plus, I think. And I would like to get those guys back before I would think about trading for somebody like Damon Severson. So Andre Nisimov has been injured, so that's going to put Ekholm into the lineup on the defensive core. But we still get a win in a shootout against those Rangers. The defending Stanley Cup champions, actually. So we are 16-6-3 at December the 1st. How is the standings looking? We're also going to quickly save... Damn, point of 38 points in 25 games. I don't know if they're all power play points or what. Like, he, maybe he actually plays really good on the point on the power play. Hmm. Because he's on the second line for the regular strength stuff, so... Maybe it's just the power play that's clicking really crazy. But yeah, our division's pretty tight again. As you can see, there's only a three-point differential between us and the last wildcard spot. So we got to keep it up and keep winning games, especially against Eastern Conference teams. But obviously we want to win against Western Conference teams as well. So let's go all the way to January the 1st. And multiple players on Ottawa are eligible to be dressed. I think there's only one scratch guy or one injured guy. Um, yeah, I think that was only our defenseman. I think there must have been some temporary injury as well. So Nismov back into the lineup. Yeah, that's good. So game against Florida. And we beat them 7-2. Damn. Our offense is really good some games. And then our defense is really good some games. And then they're really bad some other games. Like that 5-1 loss against St. Louis. And Voinov has been injured with an injured hand. Damn, that sucks. That's our best offensive player. Let's just go replace player for now because it's only for a week. But that really sucks. Hopefully he could still maybe take home an award this season. Because if he could win an award in his third season, that would be pretty crazy. Because we haven't really had that much awards on our team in general. Like, I think Pekanov might be the only one that's won an award. So, Shvidki, thank you for playing there. How did you do, actually? Wow, three points in three games. The depth is actually producing, too. That's pretty nice. So, Voinov, here you go. He's up to an 86 now. Like, I think he, since Voinov's having a really good season, he's definitely getting to a 90 or so next season. And he's going to become, like, the next Loktyanov. I've been saying that almost since he uh, was drafted, though, in a way, because... Well, not since he was drafted, since he, like... I think after his first season in the AHL, I knew he was going to be a really good player just on how he grew. But damn, at the NHL level, he's been really good, because I think he's got over 100 points, and, and he's only played close to 200 games, maybe. Like, I think he's putting up points at, like, a point eight per game, uh, points per game pace. Because I've been keeping up with career stats for players, too, so. Anyways, last two games of this month against Columbus, or last three games, actually. We beat Columbus 4-1. to one. Can we beat Winnipeg? Yes, we do 8-1. to one. Jeez. 
Yeah, I think Kuleshov must be having a good season as well. So 27, 11, and 3 at January the 1st. And we're in 2030 already, so there's only like another 12 seasons left. Hopefully we could take home a cup this year. Pro Horkins leading the team with 53 points in 41 games, so that second line might be outproducing the first line. Or we just have a lot of good depth, like maybe our top two lines are producing like crazy and our bottom six isn't. So yeah, let's just continue assimilating. We're halfway through the season. I'm not going to check player stats till the very end of the season if we get there or at the trade deadline if I decide I want to end the episode there. So let's go another month. Game against LA, we beat them in a shootout 5-4, so another good offensive game. I feel like we have probably one of the top offensive cores in the league, and we probably have a really solid like defensive goals against as well. But who knows, there could be other teams that are a lot better than that. So we beat Toronto 6-3, can we beat Minnesota, who's doing really bad? And we just, we do, we beat them 4-1, to one, and we beat Chicago. So we're on a three-game uh, winning streak. Game against the Oilers is another win. Wow, we're scoring like an average of like four goals a game, it looks like, almost. Like, yeah, we probably have one of the best offensive cores or best power plays in the league. Like, that's five straight games where we've scored at least four goals. Can we beat the Flames? No, we do not. We get beaten 5-1. to one. That's a random loss. But then we beat the Sharks 5-4 in a shootout. And that's going to wrap up January. So we're 34-13-4 at February the 1st. Nice. Detroit's also having a really good season this year. Let's quickly save this again. Pro Horkin's still playing really good. He's got really good passing. Like, our top line, though, we might have to let Prohorkin go is the thing. Because I'm not I'm not removing Pekanov from the top line. And we're going to have to remove somebody from the top line for Prohorkin to play. So I think if Prohorkin's contract ends this year, he might have to leave for another team. Just to, so he actually gets his ice time. Because I don't know if we're going to be able to balance out that ice time evenly. So let's go to the straight deadline. I think we're probably going to do the full season in this. Just because that's normally what I do. And I'd like to get a lot of seasons done with, so then I have less seasons to simulate once we finish up this GM mode series. So then I could do my, my recap, and it could be only like maybe, say, five seasons or something like that. Game against Vancouver. Is a 2 nothing loss. Hmm, I'm surprised your offense didn't come through there. Because I think, yeah, Vancouver lost Tyler Sagan last year to retirement. And he was one of their best offensive players playing with, like, Brock Besser and Peterson or Pedersen, however you pronounce it. Uh, no thank you, still don't want Damon Severson. Game against Colorado is another loss. Wow, we're actually playing pretty bad this month so far. Game against the Bruins... Once it loads, it's been really slow. Damn, the simulation gets so slow in like the later seasons. Like that took maybe about like ten seconds for it to flip. Uh, Cameron Schneider on waivers. Who is this guy? Wow, this guy might actually be pretty good. Probably not though. If he's on waivers. Nah, I don't really need him. We got our depth defender in Ekholm anyways, so I'm fine with that. So we did beat the Bruins. Can we beat the Canes? We're also doing pretty solid. That looks like we're around 500. Yes, we beat Carolina. Can we beat them again in this home and home? Yes, we do. Last three games before the trade deadline, and then there's one actually on the deadline. There's another win. Okay, now we're playing good again. So we got a four-game winning streak. Already at 40 wins before we have 20 losses. There's a shootout loss against Chicago. Can we beat Arizona? No, thank you. I don't want that trade offer. Yes, we do. So we finish at the trade deadline 41, 16, and 6. So we still have like another 20 something games, but we're playing really good. 
<laughs> well, damn, and Voinov's got 76 points in 60 games. He missed like a week's worth of games, like three games or something, yet he's got the most points. Like, if he wins an Art Ross in his third season at 22 or something, that would be pretty insane. So, yeah, I definitely think we're not going to make any trades because the way that we're playing offensively and the way that we're first currently in our division, I'm just going to continue assimilating. I'm curious who we're going to play in the playoffs, though. Hopefully it's a team we could actually beat because, like, we've had such bad luck not getting past that second round. Like, I want to get to the conference finals this year. So we beat the Leafs 5-3 to three to continue that awesome winning streak, I think. Let's go all the way to April the 1st. This is a busy month. Yeah, we have like four straight Saturday games. We beat Vegas 3-0. Good job, Kuleshov, or whoever was in that, in that game. And then our offense shows up for the second game, 7-2 win. Damn, we're on a good winning streak here. I don't even know how long this winning streak is, and then it is ended by the Tampa Bay Lightning. We might have a 60-win season again, or probably not actually now, because Vishnevsky's been injured. Of course, Vishnevsky has to go down with an injury. I think he's had, like, a couple injuries in his career that have kept him out, like, near the end of the season. I think the bigger one was, like, in his first season where he had, like, an MCL sprain or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Because the guy like blocks a lot of shots and throws a lot of hits, so he's constantly sacrificing his body. Um, okay, defenseman. So, where is it? Oh, Liam Eckholm. Jeez. So, there you go, Vishnevsky. And as that... Yeah, Voinov is already up to an 87. Jeez. And he's almost at 50 goals in 70 games. Yo, this guy might hit 50 goals in his third season. What the hell is this? I didn't think the guy was going to be that good, but he's, like... Damn, this guy might be, like, the next, like, Pukanov in terms of goal scoring for us. And Pukanov's still signed for, like, another seven seasons, I think. So we're going to be scoring a lot of goals with those two on the top line, probably. And then with Loktyanov down the middle, he's going to get a lot of assists, I hope. Because, yeah, I think Baumgartner is definitely out of the picture for next season, if he is on his last year. Okay, so last three games of the season, two of them are against Columbus, one against Montreal. We're not going to hit 60 wins, but we could hit 56 wins at the most. Make that 55 wins at the most. Can we beat Montreal to end off the season? Yes, we can. So we finished the season 55-20-7. Really great season, and we won the Presence Trophy, actually, too. Damn. Good job, boys. Okay, so let's save this. I think it's hit our leading point, man. Had 49 goals, and that was, yeah, Voinov. So, Voinov, 97 points in 79 games. He could have actually got an Art Ross, potentially, in his third season. So, let's start by each position. So, Pro Horkin, 94 points. And that's on the second line. Holy crap. 94 points, 14 goals, 80 assists, plus 42. Then Loktyanov on the first line, 81 points, 21 goals, 60 assists, plus 25. And then James Marco on the fourth line, 25 points, and a plus 6. Damn, I couldn't have asked him any more of my centers. Left wing-wise, Voinov, 97 points in 79 games, 49 goals, 48 assists, a plus 43. Damn, this guy's insane. He's got, like, probably close to 200 career points now, or over 200 career points. Push care of 81 points, so another 80-plus point player. That's four of them, I think, already. Lou Joseph, 43 points. Ola Hornquist, 42 points. Conley, 39 points. Fuga Fuji, 25 points. And Shvidki, 3 points in 3 games. Right wing wise, wow. Okay, Plakanov actually had a weird season. But Baumgartner, 78 points in 82 games. Another really good player. And then Plakanov, 72 points in 82 games, 45 goals. And then in Westcott's rookie season, 41 points. And he was a minus one, actually, so he's only the minus player in offense. Defensively, Kapitanov, 30 points in 82 games and a plus 34. That guy definitely have us out defensively and offensively, too. 
And then LaRose, 26 points, probably because of the power play. Vishnevsky, 19 points. McCutcheon, 17 points. And Isimov, 15 points in 80 games. Then Jet Wu, 13 points in 82 games. And Ekholm, no points in 5 games. Goaltending wise, Kuleshov went 46, 15, and 6 with 6 shutouts, a 9.22 save percentage, and a 2.28 goals against average. And Nordstrom went 11, 7, and 1 with 1 shutout, a 9.12 save percentage, and a 2.65 goals against average. So, what a season for our offense! Like, yeah, I think that's like the most 80 plus point players I've had, or best point per game players I've had. Like, Plakanov upwards is 72 points, which, yeah, it's six players that had over 70 points. And then we also had, like, three players with 40 points, another player that was really close to it. Yeah, this was a really insane season. Let's just check the entire league, because I'm curious if Voinov's won any awards. And, yes, Voinov and Pro Horkin were that close, but Voinov has an Art Ross, and he looked... He's looking like he might have him. No, he doesn't have a Richard. Kovalchuk just beat him out. But anyways, Voinov has an Art Ross in his third season in the NHL. How crazy is that? Wow. And we might also have like a Fezna trophy, win trophy winner and all that stuff. This is a really good season in comparison to last year's. Like that addition of uh, that defenseman, I think must have helped us out a whole lot. Okay, so now let's see who we're up against in the playoffs. We're actually going to check the standings and stuff as well because I haven't done that yet. But let's see who we're playing in the playoffs. And it's going to be the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, that's actually kind of scary. We haven't had a playoff matchup against Montreal since 2013 in real life. Let me just check the standings stuff quickly though. Because uh, I meant to actually do that beforehand. So, goals four per game on average. We were the second best offensive team behind the Colorado Avalanche. Goals against per game, we were the second best team behind the New York Rangers. Power play percentage, we were top five. Yeah, we were fifth in the league with 24.6%. And our penalty kill was also top five, fourth in the league at 83.9%. So we were good in every situation. We had two shorthanded goals. 26, 10, and 5 on home ice, 29, and 10, and 2 on the road. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Habs lines, and then that will be it for this episode. So hopefully we could beat the Habs, and hopefully we continue this trend in the playoffs. Like, at least get to the cup finals this year. Uh, Montreal, there you go. So first line, they got Gilbert Moreau. Um, they also got, or it's probably Gilbert Moreau. Uh, Jesper Josephson. Oh, yeah, the franchise guy they drafted. Wasn't he a franchise? Yeah, I think he was a franchise player that they drafted in 2028. They also got Ye or Jesse Yolonen, Rod Ballard, Martin Nikas as a second line center, and Lauren Degg. Third line, they got Matthias Viborny, Michael Barranca, who's looking like an 87 as well. He's definitely an 87. Yeah, their center core is really deep. Uh, Tyrone Hillen. Fourth line, they got Emmanuel Labrie, Milan Cernik, and Guillermo Abney. Okay. So, yeah, their offense is really deep, and that kind of scares me. Defensively, they're also pretty deep, it looks like. They got Nicholas Tomaranz, uh, Khalil Bartkowski. These are all, like, created guys, it seems like. Dakota McLennan, Gord Morrison, Victor Mete, so he's an actual real guy. And Petri Jarvanen. And in terms of goaltending, they got our former goaltender in Philip Gustafson and Gord DeSalvatore. Scratch, they got Patrick Prindis, Jace Howerluck, and Taro Hentinen. So it's a bunch of EA-generated guys, but it's a really scary team. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Sens franchise mode. So in next episode, we are going to take on the Montreal Canadiens in the first round of the playoffs. And hopefully we could just get to that second round. And hopefully we could get on farther in that second round because we've been having so many trouble with that second round, especially. I like to also quickly uh, shout out my sponsors over at Oilfield Jersey Co. If you guys didn't remember from last episode, they have these NHL merchandise things like this. 
and they also have some actual NFL merchandise. You could check them out. The link is in the description. And if you use my coupon code SNIPE, you could save 10% off your order. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.